Hey guys, and welcome to the first installment of my Vanilla WoW boss guys featuring Prophet Scarab, the gatekeeper and first boss of AQ40. This video will feature multiple segments, so if you want to skip to a different topic, feel free to check out the timestamps in the description box down below. Firstly, let's talk about raid composition. All guilds have different situations and rosters, however, this brief segment will lay out my thoughts on what I believe is optimal for entering AQ4. Starting with melee, you should expect to bring at least 6-9 to nine warriors, with 3 of those being geared tanks. DPS warriors at this point in the game should be prepared to become off tanks on the fly, as you will see with Scarum and other encounters inside of AQ40, including the trash mobs after Twin Emps, and later in the future, the Four Horsemen. Try to bring 3-5 to five rogues, since their spell disruption and stun locking abilities are incredibly valuable for fights such as Scarum and the giant eye tentacles during phase 2 on C'Thun. For your healers, it's required to bring 10-12, to 12. however, due to progression, you may need to increase the numbers to 13 or 14 depending on your guild situation. Always make sure to have a fair distribution of priests, druids, paladins of your alliance, shamans if you're horde, so that there is a full coverage of blessings, buffs, and totem management. Overall, there will be much more raid damage occurring in AQ40, which will put your healers to the test and provide good experience for next Rathas. Lastly, your guild should try to bring 6-7 Warlocks and 6-7 Mages, as caster DPS begins to spike considerably in AQ40 and beyond with the introduction of Fire Mages and the scaling of Warlocks, which is the gear that begins dropping from the bosses. At this point in the game, fights begin to favor ranged DPS as you will see with C'Thun, Oro, and so on. If possible, try to keep the number of hunters in your guild limited at 2 or 3 raid slots, since unfortunately due to the state of the game, they begin to become outshined by the other DPS classes, along with the lack of encounters requiring more than a couple. Our next segment focuses on raid positioning where you will see all of the areas that tanks, healers, and DPS are located at during the fight. The fight will begin with all members of the raid group, following the main tank forward up the stairs. At this point, the raid will split up to their assigned positions with the main tank, focusing on Scarum and tanking him where he stands or against the back wall. Fury warriors and rogues assigned to the middle platform will follow their main tank and begin their DPS rotations as soon as possible. At the same time, warriors and rogue teams will break off for the left and right platforms to get ready for Scarum's clone ability at 75% health. It is recommended to have at least two tanks on each platform due to the possibility of mind control so that the other can take over. We will cover this ability in a later segment. Healers will be forced to cover a wide area that includes the left platform, back area behind Scarum, and right platform as dictated by the healing assignments from your officers. Finally, ranged DPS will always place themselves behind Scarum and above the highest staircases. Expect to always be on the move as we will see in later segments. Portile Split is Scarum's signature ability where he will split into three versions of himself at 75, 50, and 25% health. Out of these three entities, two will be illusions while the third will be the real one. Keep in mind that the illusions possess the same abilities as the real one we will cover later in this section. There are several options that your raid can do to identify the real ones. However, in my experience, the easiest is having your warlocks use drain mana at the start of the fight until his mana pool is at roughly 389 to 390,000 mana. This is because during the splits, the clones will always have full mana, while the real one will not. Earthshock is a dangerous range spell the Scarum uses when the player he is fixated on is out of his melee range. The spell is visualized by a blue electric discharge from your character when being hit by it. It is generally advised that all ranged DPS and healers use greater nature protection potions for this fight to absorb the nature damage that ranges between 2500 to 3000 damage per second. As long as ranged DPS watch their threat at key moments that result in aggro wipes, such as when Scarum teleports to another platform, or when he splits into three versions of himself at each quartile of his health, 
this ability is generally not too bad to deal with. On a final note, limited invulnerability potions, if used quick enough, can drop your aggro for 6 seconds. However, if tanks are reacting fast enough, this should rarely have to be used. Arcane Explosion is a random spell cast by Scarum that deals 1000 to 1500 arcane damage in the form of a massive AoE explosion. It can be interrupted by abilities such as Rogue's Kick or Warrior's Pummel. It can also be affected by spells such as Curse of Tongues by Warlocks or Mind Numbing Poison from Rogues. It is recommended that every member of the raid use Greater Arcane Protection Potions until the content is on farm status. True Fulfillment is Prophet Scarum's mind control spell that can affect any member of the raid group. While under the effects, the player receives a massive damage boost, which means that they must be CC'd immediately, otherwise they will begin one-shotting players in your raid group. Lastly, there is the possibility that one of the tanks on Scarum, or a clone, may become mind controlled which means it will be up to the other tank, or another tank somewhere in your raid, take control of the situation. Blink is a random periodic teleport to any nearby platform that occurs at certain intervals. The most important thing about this ability is that it is a total threat wipe each time the Scarum does it. Range DPS must be extremely cautious with their targets. Before we finish this section, I just want to talk briefly about numerical values. Due to many Different versions of vanilla World of Warcraft, whether it's 2006, various private servers, or classic World of Warcraft, there is a lot of discrepancy on what the actual values are. According to some estimates, Garum should hit for around 2,000 to 3,000 damage cloth armor. This health should be around half a million, but depending on your source, you may reach a different answer. For the last segment of this video, we will go through the fight from start to finish with my commentary laid on top of the gameplay. The fight begins with a tank immediately engaging Scarum as the raid group splits up and heads to their assigned locations. Moving to my spot, I quickly toss Curse of Tongues onto Scarum while switching to Drain Mana to help out for later stages of the fight. Switching to my DPS rotation, I notice one of our druids become my control on the right side as we head into the first quartile split. I am immediately hit by Earthshock as the tank quickly gets it under control as the designated player in our raid group calls out for us to focus on the clone in the middle. Due to the low health of the clones at the stage, it doesn't take too long for us to kill it as we begin to shift over to the right platform. Already weakened, the second clone goes down quickly as I can barely get a Shadow Bolt on. Down below, one of our rogues becomes mind controlled, but one of the warlocks uses fear to make sure that they can't do any harm. By the time I get there, the raid is already close to pushing Scarum into Phase 2. Shortly afterward, Phase 2 starts with one illusion appearing on the left platform, while the real Prophet Scarum and another illusion spawn on top of each other in the middle. This could be a problem for inexperienced guilds, it will be up to your tanks to coordinate if they need to separate them or if the situation is under control. Before we can kill the illusion, it suddenly blinks to the left platform and casters start getting hit by Earthshock the tanks quickly try to stabilize the situation. With the illusion down, we start shifting back the way we came as the real Scarum suddenly teleports on top of the last clone. Unfortunately, we lose the target as the clone suddenly blinks away and several people in the raid are hit by arcane explosion. The hunter in front of me is suddenly MC'd, forcing me to stop and cast fear with another mage assisting the polymorph. Fortunately, during this time, the raid group finishes off the last clone and we begin regrouping for phase 3. During this phase, the raid group will always want to focus the real Scarum while keeping the illusions under control. Unfortunately, the real one teleports away as I activate Toap, and a sudden barrage of air shocks almost sends me to my grave. At this point, the boss so close to dying, the general mindset of the raid shifts into just burning him down. After a few intense seconds with a lot of stuff happening around us, we finally burn Scarum down, ending the fight. In conclusion, Prophet Scarum is a heavy fight that requires a lot of movement and adapting to the situation, but with proper control, coordination, and pacing, the fight will be yours in the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you notice anything I missed or have some tips of your own, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Stay tuned for next time, featuring the second boss of AQ40, Sartora.